Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials. In today's video, I'm going to tell you more about how to teach. This element is going to be on the instructional systems development process. Now, the instructional systems development process, also called ISD, is a system by which you can develop a course of instruction. This is anything from a single lesson all the way up to an entire college degree. You can use the instructional systems development process. Unfortunately, there's not a consensus on what the ISD process consists of. They are mostly developed by doctoral level scholars called educational psychologists or other EDD sorts of people, doctorate of education. If you get 45 educational psychologist doctoral level people in one room and ask them to write down what is the ISD process, out of those 45 people, you'll probably get 35 different answers. The answer I have for you is a simplified version of it. It's a five-step process, and the reason I like it is because after studying many ISD processes from all of these educational psychologists, I have determined that this five-step process, number one, it covers all of the aspects that need to be covered, and number two, it's easy for most people to remember. If you just put your mind to it a little bit, you should be able to remember all five of these steps. Let me show you what I mean. Here it is. We're starting out here with an overview of the entire ISD process. You can see it has the five steps, but we're not going to do all of those five steps at once. Instead, let's just start with an empty frame and we will explain each step as we go along. Now, the instructional systems development process can apply to anything from a one-on-one -on -one single lesson to a single student all the way up to a seminar full of three or 400 students that comprises part of an entire course system. Now, you can use the ISD process for any of those. And my contention is that if you use the ISD process, you will be a lot more effective in teaching than you would be if you do not use it. Now, the ISD process, sadly, is not just a single concept. It's a system developed by doctoral level educators called educational psychologists and EDDs and PhDs in education. And my thought is that if you got 45 educational psychologists together in a room and you ask each of them to write down what their notion is of the instructional systems development process, you would get at least 35 different answers out of those 45 educators. There are many of them, and I have seen them having as many as 65 different steps in them. And that's just more than a normal person can absorb. The five-step system that I really like is the one that I believe covers all of the bases and normal people can understand what it is and keep it in their mind as they go through the process. Let's get started with step number one, which is to establish the essential knowledges, skills, and attitudes you want all learners to have at the end of this course of instruction. Now, some people say KSA means knowledge, skills, and abilities, but skills and abilities are so similar I prefer knowledge of skills and attitudes because that covers the three main domains of learning. I have covered the domains of learning in a previous video. If you haven't watched that yet, I advise you go watch that right now. Knowledge of skills and attitudes are the three areas of learning that you need to define at the beginning of an ISD process so that you will have a specific level of learning in each of these that is a goal for each person who takes this course of education to achieve by the end of this course. But establishing those isn't enough. Step number two, you need to figure out what do your learners already know because you don't need to teach them what they already know. For example, if you're teaching a course in advanced calculus, you do not need to teach basic level addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Unfortunately, in a large classroom situation, anything from a seminar of 12 to 15 people through a normal sized classroom of 25 to 35 people up to a giant mass classroom of several hundred people, 
it's very difficult to find a common ground of what people already know because you're always going to have some people that don't know quite as much as other people in there. If you're teaching an online course, this is far different because online courses are usually one-on-one -on -one instruction, either with or without an instructor, and the instructor or the computer can then determine through a pretest or conversation what does a student already know, and then you know you do not have to teach that to that student later on down the road. Once you subtract what the student knows from the knowledges, skills, and attitudes you want them to have at the end of the course of instruction, you will then be able to move on to step three, which is to create your objectives and your tests. This is one of the most important and often overlooked steps in developing any course of instruction, especially for classroom teachers. They usually take objectives given to them from higher up or from a book, but every educator, anybody who's teaching anything to anybody, needs to know in advance what it is you want the students to be taught in this class. In other words, you need to know the objectives. Now, I have a previous video on setting objectives, and if you have not watched that yet, I strongly advise you go watch that right now. There should be a card in the upper right-hand corner of this video that will link you to that, and you can go watch it right now and then come back and pick up this video right where we left off. But understanding how to create objectives is of critical importance in developing a system of education. Once you have developed your objectives, it's now time to develop your tests, your evaluation, your assessments. And a lot of people, including me, when they first hear this, think, but wait a minute, I haven't taught them. How do I know what to test them on? Well, that's why you have created objectives. Now, I have an entire course on this that I will be making a video on later in this series that teaches how to create tests from the objectives. This is what I call my objective base planning, teaching, and assessment theory of education. The planning is what we're doing right now. The teaching is teaching what you plan, and this is what this ISD process is about. And the tests are the evaluation, the assessments is what we're talking about, and that will be step five in this process. But step three is you need to create your objectives and your tests for this particular course of instruction. Once you do that, you can then move on and teach the material. And the reason you develop your tests and your objectives beforehand is so that when you teach the material, you don't leave anything out and you don't wind up teaching something that they don't need. This is very ineffective and inefficient in a teaching situation, and far too many teachers today indulge themselves in teaching things that the students don't need or not teaching things that they do. And this is why we have the instructional systems development process. You teach the material, you teach the objectives, and you test on the objectives. And I've heard many times people say, but aren't you just teaching the test? And the answer is absolutely not. You're teaching the objectives and you are testing the objectives. And that is when you have valid assessments, valid teaching, and valid testing. After you teach the material, you need to understand whether what you did was effective. And the way to do that is to assess your instructional effectiveness. There are two ways to assess instructional effectiveness. One of them is through testing. I'm going to have an entire segment in this series of how to teach on how to create tests and how to administer tests. And there are many different kinds of tests you can administer, but the only valid tests are those that test the objectives. They test whether the students have the proper behavior that exhibits their achievement of the level of learning for each one of the objectives. That's the first way to test. The second way to assess your instructional effectiveness is to go where the students are after they finish your course of instruction when they are supposedly using what you taught in their occupation, job, hobby, whatever it is they're doing, you need to go to the student themselves and you need to go to their supervisors when such is available and you ask the questions. How well did what we teach 
impact what you need to do right now? Did we teach everything you need? Did we leave something out? Did we teach more than you need? And how well did we get you to the level of learning you need to be able to do this, what you're trying to do effectively? And this is one of the most overlooked aspects of all teaching systems. They don't check how effective it was after the student graduates the course and gets out into the world. Once you have assessed the instructional effectiveness, you can start the entire cycle over again by evaluating the knowledge, skills, and attitudes you set initially and adjusting them if you need to. You then go through the entire circle again, making adjustments, and you do feedback throughout the entire process. When you are creating your objectives and tests, you can get the feedback from prior cycles of the instructional effectiveness. Oh, we need to test this particular objective a little bit more. Oh, we need to create another objective here in the knowledge, skills, and abilities that we didn't cover good enough. When we're teaching the material, we need to say, oh, wow, we wound up teaching this and everybody already knew it. We might not need to teach that next time. You do the feedback throughout the entire process. Now, this is the five-step instructional systems development process. This is a process that if you are teaching anybody anything from explaining to a child why the sky is blue up to teaching a seminar full of six or 800 students on advanced calculus, this is a system that if you use it, you will be much more effective in your instruction than if you do not use a system, but just mostly poke at, oh, this seems like a good idea. This is the instructional systems development process. Now, there you have it, my version of the ISD process. If you will apply this to developing any sort of course of instruction from a single lesson all the way to a entire college course of getting a whole degree program, then your instruction will be a lot more effective than if you do not apply an ISD process. Thanks for watching this. If you enjoyed the video, if you thought it was a worthwhile video, please give me that thumbs up and that'll let me and the YouTube robots know that you thought it was a good video. It'll encourage me to produce more videos and it will tell the YouTube robots that they need to recommend this video to other people who are looking for this sort of thing. Leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought, what you'll be using the ISD process for, and share this video with other people that you think might need to know what it is. As always, if you're a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate every one of you. And if you're not, why not go ahead right now and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon and YouTube will let you know by email when I post another great video right here on the David's Tutorials and Vlog channel. Meantime, take care everybody. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.